let's consider two situations in which a loop of, of current is situated inside a region of magnetic field. In the first case, the loop is perpendicular to the direction of the magnetic field. In the second case, the loop is in the plane along with the magnetic field. In each of these two cases, can we decide whether the loop of wire feels a net force, a net torque, both a net force and a net torque, or neither a force nor a torque? In both cases, we should look separately at each of the lengths of the wire in this square loop because each of them will feel a, a separate force. I times L cross B, the formula that we saw previously. In case A, let's again look at each segment of the wire. The segment of the wire toward the back feels a force that points away from us and in, into the page. That's because L points to the right, excuse me, to the left, B points straight up, and by the right-hand rule, if we curl our th fingers from the left, pointing straight up now, our thumb points back into the page. On the other hand, the segment of the wire closest to us has a force point out on it pointing out toward us. The segment of wire on the left-hand side has a force pointing to the left, again by the right-hand rule, because L points out toward us, and we curl our fingers up toward B, our thumb points off to the left. The segment of the, right, the wire on the right-hand side has a force over to the right, again by the right-hand rule. Since L points back into the page, B points straight up, we curl our fingers, and the force points off to the left. In this case, the, the loop of wire in picture A has no net force because all the segments of wire have a force that tend to counteract one another. Since there's, also, since there's no force, there's also no net torque because torque is R cross F. In case B, again it helps to look at each segment, segment of the wire separately. The segment of the wire on the left has force on it equal to zero. That's because L points straight down, B points straight up, and the angle between them is 180 degrees. The sine of 180 degrees in the cross product is zero. Likewise, the segment of wire on the right has also a force of equal to zero, but the segment of wire on the top of the page has a force that points into the page. This is because L points over to the left, B points straight up, and when we curl our fingers from the left to straight up, our thumb points back into the page. The segment of the wire down at the bottom has a force pointing straight out, and if we were to draw this picture three-dimensionally, like over here on the right-hand side, then we can imagine this square loop of wire with a force on the back side pointing down, the force on the right hand side pointing up, and the square loop of wire is trying to spin or rotate. This means that although the net force on this object is zero, there is a net torque. It's trying to make the, th the loop of wire spin. In fact, this idea of spinning a loop of wire and causing it to execute mechanical motion is the idea behind an electric motor. In an electric motor, we take the energy of making charges move in a circuit, like in a current, and we convert that electrical energy into the mechanical energy of making that loop of wire spin.
Notice the loop of wire is now spinning very rapidly. The stripped underside of the wire allows a current to flow through the loop. Since the loop is in a magnetic field, these moving charges feel forces, as we discussed in the last episode. Charges moving to the right at the top of the loop feel a push into the screen, while charges moving to the left at the bottom of the loop feel a push out of the screen. These forces work to turn the coil. When this happens, the insulated portion of the wire turns as well, blocking the current through the loop and eliminating the turning forces. The loop then coasts through a full turn, ending up where it began. The whole thing starts over again.